though. What? Bring me the church phone, please. Can you pull it up so we can see what we are? All right, and we're live. Let's see, give me a second to make our screen full. Go to full screen. All right, can you hear me, Miss Joyce? I can. All right, great, great, great. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I am your host, Pastor Stacy. And I'm Pastor Harry. And we're the K Signs. And we want to welcome you this evening to our life discussion. And our very special guest this evening is Ms. Joyce Palmer from the JP Financial Group, right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. We got the money queen in the Queen City, y'all. <laughs> Hello, how is everybody doing? Yes, yes, yes. And as usual, we want you guys to go ahead and like, share, and comment. And if you got any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll make sure that we share them with Miss Joyce. And we're talking about, are you ready? Are you ready for an emergency financially? Do you have your coins together? You know, grandma and pop pop told us to put a couple of dollars in the jar put a couple dollars under the mattress, but we know in this day and age that is not going to generate financial wealth, generational wealth, that's definitely not going to help us in the time of trouble. Yes, we need to put something aside for a rainy day, but Ms. Joyce is here to tell us how we could do that, <laughs> how we could put some money aside for a rainy day. Anything you want to say? Listen, they say don't Get caught with your pants down. <laughs> That's how it is. When the rainy days come and you ain't ready, you know, whether it's uh, life insurance, health insurance, you know, we ain't got to go create a GoFundMe because you ain't oh, got to cover out. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so it's... GoFundMe is it's, not life insurance. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so important. It's so important to be prepared. So when something happens, you can react in the right way because to every action there's a reaction to every cause there's an effect absolutely you know and if and if you not preparing for what you don't expect then you are unprepared absolutely so miss joyce you want to go ahead and tell tell us a little bit about yourself sure sure so first i'm so excited to be on with you guys this is exciting Thank you. <laughs> um, so I am um, the CEO and founder of JP Financial Group and the co-owner of JPFG Wealth Management. And um, JP Financial Group is actually a financial boutique for ladies, but we love men too. <laughs> um, and our goal and mission is to empower ladies to be proactive with their money, grow their wealth and create legacies. Um, and then I'm the, also the co-owner of JPFG Wealth Management, which is a money wealth management company. And we talk about investing the smart way. So ultimately, you have to be in it to win it. So if you're not like in the it. market, you, you, you need to get in it the right way. And so at JPFG Wealth Management, we talk to you about investing in the market. Just quote one of my sermons. You got to be in it to win it. You got to be in it to win it. Don't get in it at all. That's right. That's right. You can't be on the sidelines and everybody else is getting rich and building mm -hmm. wealth. And you're like, Ooh, that's great. That's great. What about me? You got to be in it. Absolutely. Now, Miss Joyce, I just learned something new. Could you repeat your second business? I got the JP financial group. Yes. One, yes. I learned that it's for women. I didn't know that's that part. Right. That's you right. said the second company that you so own. Yeah. JPFG wealth management and it's a wealth management company. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm gonna have to. I I got some wealth management questions. <laughs> and so again, ladies and gentlemen, New Hope family, go ahead, like, share, invite people in. Anybody that needs to talk about money and how to generate 
generational wealth, how to invest the smart way. She didn't just say invest. She said invest the smart the way. Smart way. So before you guys start jumping in with your questions, I got a question. What is invest the smart way? Because <laughs> over this last year, since we've been doing the Life Discussion Podcast, of course, we talk about we invite you all into our living room and we just sitting down having a conversation. You wow. know, if it wasn't COVID, you would be over the house and we'll be <laughs> laughing and drinking coffee, <laughs> tea, Pepsi, whatever your flavor. So now I'm gonna close my legs and ask you about investing a smart way because we've been hearing a lot about investing, investing and getting on, I think it's the Robinhood app. So mm-hmm. we can invest in, you know, a couple companies through Robinhood ML or M1 financial stuff like that so tell tell me and then the rest of them could just grab some nuggets that's right that's been the smart way (laughs) yeah exactly so the smart way is actually hiring if you will and money manager and that's what we do um Chaz Laney heads up our uh, wealth division and it's one thing to play around in the market and it's okay to do some things on your own, but like anything else, when you're getting ready to take it to another level, you need to bring in experts. You need to bring in someone who has the expertise, the training, the credibility and experience in order to get the results that you want to get. So what we do is we share with our clients um, his knowledge and his understanding of the market, and most importantly, his ability to help coach them and guide them through making those investment choices so that um, they're not just kind of winging it or hoping they're getting it right. Um, And that's okay for a little bit, you know, but when you want to get serious, you probably want to hire a coach. And same thing on the financial planning side, when you really want to start planning for your retirement, and that's the sweet spot that we work with, you want to have a coach, you know, you want to have someone who's going to push you, motivate, inspire you, but also guide you um, to make the right choices. So that's what we mean by smart investing. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that because I want to make sure that we're investing the smart way. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Because mama ain't raised no food. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. All right. So for planning for financial, for financial wealth, could you help me or help us if you know, well, we're, I I guess we would be considered a mature couple, you know, and we have 401ks with our um, employers. We got a a small savings fund because we got five kids and two of them in college and the other three in high school, they back, 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 back. So what are some things that we should have in place? Because this, let let me get close so the kids won't hear me. My plan is for all of them to take care of us. I already told them they better get good jobs because I want to check from everybody. That's right. <laughs> even, even if they get married, I'm going to be like, hey, where's my check? I want That's money right. every month. If not, I'm coming to live with them three months at a time. And like I said, it's five of them. So that take care of at least a year and a half. Uh-huh. I'm going to turn on all the TVs, the radio, eat up all the food. I'm going to put a refrigerator in my room. <laughs> I can wave in my room. <laughs> That's right. It's funny you say that because what I share with clients is that you can, um, and we love our children, of course, and we definitely want to pour into them and, and make sure they have everything they need and want. Um, but sometimes it's a balancing act between doing that and making sure you're planning for your own retirement because when they're gone, you want to make sure you can be self-sufficient and, and not have to go move in with them. <laughs> you know I mean? um, so I would share with people, you can finance college. You can't finance retirement. You can't go get a loan for your retirement, right? You can go get a loan technically for college, right? You can't go get a loan and say, you know, I'm looking to retire. Can I get a loan so I can retire? So you better be building your retirement plan while you're still helping them do what they need to do. But keep in mind that at the end of the day, you need to have your retirement monies being building up over time. Okay. 
And when you see me looking down, that's because I take notes. That's right. <laughs> like I said, listen, we sitting in the living room and the rest of the world, Facebook, they, you know, they just can grab some of these nuggets because I want to make sure that we right. That's right. And, and I love how you just said that. Like, you know, you can finance school and college education, but we can't finance our retirement. That's right. That's good to know. That's right. That's right. And I think that's really important because at this point in stage of our lives, uh, we are uh, we're in that, that midlife phase. Mm. You know, where you know we ain't senior citizens, <laughs> but we're not young bucks no more either. Right. So, you know, um, you know, I, I truly believe a person that don't plan to succeed will plan to fail. Absolutely. You know, right. and these are the things that we need to plan to succeed in, mm -hmm. you know, as we get older, so that um we can continue to enjoy life, you know. Mm -hmm. Lord willing, when you grace my life, I plan to get into the 60s and 70s and mm -hmm. we can still be traveling and getting around and enjoying right. our life, you know, as opposed to, you know, God bless all those. And I, my prayers go out to you that's, you know, stuck in a house and can't, can't go nowhere, <laughs> you know, that's living right. like they're on good times, you know, eating, <laughs> eating cat and dog food. You know, oh, I, God. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. You know, so so this is why <laughs> this is why we have to prepare. Yeah, yeah. Preparation is the key. It is. I believe it's the golden key. You know, and I I would love for you to be able to explain, especially to our audience that may watch live or catch us on uh, YouTube on uh, New Hope FTC on YouTube. Um, explain to them, and I really want to talk to the late 30-year-olds, the 40-year-olds, the 50-year-olds on what do you envision, what do you recommend, what do you tell the people that come to you for advice about preparing for that next phase of life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, there's there's a lot of different things, obviously, you can share. I got kind of like what I call a 16 bullet point, um, and I'm kind of sharing those bullet points. And each one of them, though, is, is a conversation in itself. And that's where I invite your listeners to, to, you know, to call us, to email us, follow us on Facebook, take advantage of getting a complimentary plan done. Um, by, you know, listening to the show today, you're able to call and like I said, get a complimentary plan. But the 16 bullet points that I want to kind of spit out there, and I'm going to do a couple of them at a time, because like I said, each one is a whole conversation in itself. <laughs> Can't go into the weeds with it, but I just wanted to hit it. The first one is always spend less than what you make. And I know your mother told you that. I know mom, dad said, don't spend more than what you make. It just makes sense. However, a lot of times I see a lot of younger people doing that, spending more than what they make. Two, you must be in my house. house. I know, right? <laughs> you must be in my house because they all got little jobs, you know, and they like, oh, when I get paid, I'm going to uh -huh. buy an iPhone 20. They ain't even come out yet. And I'm going to get, you yeah. know, $200 sneakers and, and you know, and it's like, so when they get their little checks, it's like, okay, we allow them to do what they want, but they don't realize mm -hmm. you ain't paying no rent. You ain't paying no utilities. You ain't yeah. paying your car. You don't even pay your car, pay for your cell phone bill. <laughs> so <laughs> That's right. So they're definitely spending more than what they're making. Amen. Amen. They're, they're not accounting for the things that they're not having to pay for. Amen. Um, yeah. <laughs> Number two is pay yourself first. And I know this is a golden rule. We all heard this one, pay yourself first. Um, you're going to work like 90,000 hours uh, in your lifetime. So you should take at least one hour, one hour a day and make sure you put that to pay yourself. And that's not a lot to ask for. One hour paying a day. Your, paying yourself is that our, our, our spending money we can go out and do something with or is that the money we should be putting aside that's the money you should be putting aside okay putting aside yeah and 
this one is going to throw people off because they probably heard it said, you know, I got to have a budget. I got to have a budget. I got to have a budget. What I found, especially for us ladies, if you tell me a budget, immediately I start thinking of reframing, controlling, and you're telling me I can't do something. And I don't like to be told I can't do something. <laughs> I can't buy those shoes. I can't go where I want to go. So what do I do? I do it, right? So we first, Joyce, no. I'm just saying, if you tell me I can't, what you talking about I can? It's my money. I can do it if I want to. So then I reverse it and I say, let's have a spending plan, right? Okay. So now you can spend as much as you want after you take care of your necessities. And to do that spending plan the smart way, you automate it. You put everything on autopilot, auto pay, make sure it's done. That way you don't have to worry about missing that bill, right? So it simplifies the process. So I always share people, it's a spending plan. It's not a budget. It's a spending plan. You can spend all you want after you take care of these necessities. Okay. Put it on autopilot so you know it's done. You don't have to worry about it. Um, be an investor, not a borrower. Uh, be an investor, not a borrower. Yes, yes. It is a difference, right? Yes, wealthy yes, people yes. invest. Yes. Non-wealthy people, because I don't like to use the word poor, non-wealthy people borrow. Yes. Right? Yes. Buy a home, don't rent. Yes. Build right. equity. Right? That's one of the things and that my really mother definitely told me. Yes. Yeah. Because young people, are kind of, I have a 23 year old, and right now she's looking for her first little apartment and everything. And these apartments are crazy high. Yes. So yes. This, I'm saying maybe we need to revisit this, save a little money, put some money aside, and invest and buy something. Right. Yes. Versus yes. renting. Yeah. So that's it. That is so, that is so, so true. Our nephew who's, 21 he's getting ready to get his own apartment and when i was seeing the prices of this stuff i'm like bruh we we need to get you a house or start a house or something i can't yeah. imagine paying yeah. thirteen hundred dollars for a two-bedroom yeah. it's not yours yeah. yeah and people over top of you and under you and around you I yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it's going to go up every year on the lease mm -hmm. so um, another big one, and this one I like, and again, it's a whole nother conversation. Don't, <laughs> lend, don't lend money to family and friends. Ooh. If you want to keep them family and friends, <laughs> right? Because you can't do both. You cannot lend to family and friends and keep them family and friends. We love them, but that's, like I said, but that's a whole nother show. <laughs> um, and never invest in anything you don't understand. Okay. Um, so when, it, and that's, again, it goes back to the smart investing. And when you're working with a money manager, that's part of what they do is they share with you how the investments work. So you understand them. If you're investing in something, you don't understand it, then you're not going to know if you're making money or not making money. Okay. Right? You're right. So that's a good one. Um, invest for the long term. Um, that one is, again, um, my young people, they tend to see the near future, not the far future. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, right. You want to right. invest for the long term. Invest for the long term. Um, and you should have a, an emergency fund for your immediate needs and liquidity. But when you're investing, it's for the long term. So don't put the money there and then go take it back out next month. That's not long term. You got to get it are <laughs> come on are you listening you need to be here <laughs> Listen, he's one of the ones that um put us on to the the robin hood investing and uh -huh. when i think it was gamestop when all of that stuff was uh -huh. going on with gamestop uh -huh. he had a couple dollars in, in gamestop but as soon as it hit i think he originally started off with like five dollars in there it went up uh -huh. to 280 dollars. he snatched <laughs> his money out you know <laughs> And I'm like, I, you're supposed to be investing for your future. Like you said, right. like mm -hmm. every time you make a couple of dollars, you can't snatch it out. Right. And he, he looking at me like I'm saying, wah, 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 wah. 
So I'm like, well, could you take a little out for yourself and then re reinvest the rest? Like, right. why now yeah. you're back down to $5? Yeah. And he you like, but I made 280 time to work. You got to get a <laughs> compounding. There's a rule called the rule of um, 72, compound interest. You got to get compounding to take effect. Got to give money time to grow. So you got to leave it in there for a long time. He ain't doing it. <laughs> Ain't no that's right. Um, this one is this time is different. Um, it's um, once you become rich, stay rich. Once you become rich, stay rich. So it it beats oh, okay. starting over and over again. So when you say become rich, right? Once you become rich, because you will and you can right? Because you're going to be living below your means, saving money, you have an emergency fund, you're investing, um, and you're buying instead of renting. So you're building equity. And over time, you're going to build wealth. The key is maintaining and keeping that wealth. So once you're there, stay there. But you're not talking about hitting the lottery. That's right. <laughs> That's and spending right. all the winnings at Walmart. That's right. I got the lottery. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's true because you think about um, some of these athletes and people that make a ton, a ton of money, and then you hear them dying broke or not yeah. anything because they didn't understand how money really works. They made it, but they didn't understand how to maintain it and how to keep it. And that's major maintaining. Yeah. Yeah. Major. Put that one. Get That's rich. Right. Stay rich. <laughs> um, another of those bullet points that I always share, and this one is is real important, and, and you guys probably definitely understand it. You have to give back. It's the law of reciprocity. When you give, you get back. Come on now. We know that is in all facets of our life. It works in our spiritual life. It works in our financial life. Um, so when you give and you give freely and you yeah. give, you know, um, without expecting back, you get it back. Absolutely. And so if you're blessed with things financially, then make sure you, you're, you're giving back to a cause or to a purpose or something because it will come back to you twofold. Man, and I'm a firm believer in that. And that's one of my daily prayers. Lord, make me, you know, bless me so I could be a blessing to someone else. I never, you know, I know it's nothing wrong with praying and asking God for stuff for yourself, but my daily prayer is bless me so that I could be a blessing to someone else. And like you said, if we give freely, it's always going to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible said, never seen a righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So right. I'm living off of, you know, my parents' prayer. So it's always food in the cupboard. Yeah. You know, even when they say, ain't nothing to eat, it might not be what you want, but <laughs> there's always something in here to eat. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that one. I have um, my, uh, again, my 23-year-old who, when she comes home, she hits the refrigerator, hits the pantry. Oh, you don't have anything here to eat. No, I have plenty in here to eat. It's just not what you want. They want DoorDash. Right. Why are you going to spend money when it's food in the house? Exactly. 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 Yep. Um, another one of my bullet points is never give, up. Um, never give up. And no matter what happens, no matter how many times you fail, as long as you get up and try again, you are still in the game. You still have not lost. And Oftentimes, because I work with a lot of clients that are retiring, um, retirement is our specialty. And sometimes I get people come in and they say, you know what, I, I messed up. I didn't save enough. And now I don't think I have enough time to get it done. And I may be working forever. And the goal is that you still never give up. You never stop. You still keep, you know, building that money, saving, trying. If you lose it, life happens. You get back up and try again, right? And so the same thing in your financial life. It's not always going to be perfect. You have some losses, but you get back up and you try again. You keep going. No, we, 
we have a few people that's watching and you know uh, um the uh, the bible says that we suffer for the lack of knowledge and it's not that the knowledge is not out there is that either one it hasn't been provided two you don't know about it and yeah. three you just won't receive it mm -hmm. so like what can you do to urge and push our people to you know not to sleep on an opportunity such as this to be able to not just be ready for now because some people all, all feel like you know as long as i'm all right now i can't worry about tomorrow mm -hmm. you know i understand the bible says take no thought for tomorrow but that's within a spiritual concept. Like every day you should live your life spiritually like it's your last. But naturally, if you plan to live <laughs> sometime, <laughs> you, you, you got to prepare for a rainy day. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a that's a tough one because I mean, my my philosophy is that when you know better, you can do better. Um, absolutely, so we, absolutely. We, we as a community, um, we add, and of course I specialize in working with women, but we as women and and men too, um, it's time out for us sitting on the sideline and watching others build wealth, pass generational wealth down to their children mm -hmm. and create these, you know, lifestyles and we're standing on the sideline. We have the same talent, we have the same resources, we have the same abilities, we have the same God, right? That will allow right. us to take advantage of the same things. So listening to things like this, plugging in, I mean, the pandemic has forced people to, to listen more to TV and, and the radio and, and podcasts and things like that. Plug into um, self-development, plug in the things that's going to improve your knowledge and understanding you know get out of the the stuff that's just bring you know this negative get to right. the positive stuff this is out there find that plug in um what i say you know share someone else's vision until you can get yours clear you know what i mean Absolutely. and there's plenty of us out here that are that are making things happen giving positive messages plug into that plug into it because it becomes contagious yes it is yeah. Um, I was going to say before you ask the question because I'm writing them down. We stopped at number ten. No, she right now. She got, wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. I got my pen and paper. We stopped at number. We stopped at number ten. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, let me see where I'm at now. Um, compound interest really is a miracle that works when you work it. So compound interest, it can work for you or it can work against you. If you have compound yeah. interest, yeah. If you have compound interest on a credit card, and the interest rate is eighteen percent, is working against you, eighteen percent, right? But if you got compound interest in your investment account, and you get an eighteen percent, and this compound is working for you, okay. <laughs> you understand that compound interest is miracle, right? But you got to okay. make it work for you, not against you. Yep. And then I think my last one is to find the money to save and invest, you need to have what I call the latte factor. And we got this from a gentleman who has a book out, um, Why You Have to um, Be Rich to Live Rich. And he talks about the latte factor. And ladies who drink coffee probably can understand it because if you go to Starbucks to get a latte, you're talking five, six, dollars right? <laughs> well, if you figure out a way to make that latte at home before especially now pandemic you don't have to go out so you stay right? home to do that and you take that five or six dollars a day times five days times four weeks times six months times a year times yes, two yes, weeks, times yes. five years and the compound interest start kicking in you just created yourself a little wealth fund right there Oh, God. A minor little savings on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Now, I'm laughing because I was I was one of those people that was guilty of that buying coffee every you know every morning buying coffee mm-hmm. and like you said you know spending five or six dollars on that coffee if you grab a little snack or something you yeah. spend it almost ten dollars a day and, and like yeah. you said that's fifty dollars a week that's right <laughs> and that's, that's right. just that one stop that's right and then you know that's <laughs> A hundred dollars every two weeks, two hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So yeah, and you pay right to the pandemic. I was that? guilty. I was guilty. Yeah. I know I'm guilty. I'm <laughs> telling the truth. You know, because yeah. I try to I try to have something for breakfast every every day when I first, you know, get to work. And I, I'm not the one that wakes up early enough to make breakfast. <laughs> That's too early in the morning to be making breakfast. That's right. so, yeah. But I, <laughs> But I try to be <laughs> as economic with it as possible. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, Lori, Lori, Lore, uh, see it. Yes, the latte factor. I get to leave Amazon Prime products alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes, Lori. Don't be dating us. Right. The Amazon man having him come to your house every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. So when we talk about, I know you said it's for ladies, but men and men are included. Yeah. Where would estate planning, I'm sorry, <laughs> Tigger want to be a part of the conversation. Sorry. When we talk yeah. about estate planning, where would that fall in, or do you think that's something that, again, you see, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck on making sure that the children are right. So I'm going to have to call you for that's my right. complimentary <laughs> plan that's to right. make sure that me and Bay is all right, because I think we right. got the kids that's covered. Right. So, yeah, well, I think I just answered my question, because doing a trust fund is, again, for the kids. That's not... Well, it's the estate planning is, is both. I mean, and it's smart to do estate planning because um, you don't want to be, you know, again, we look at some wealthy people who pass and they don't have a will, which is really sad. Um, so estate planning includes having your will, a trust, your power attorney, um, your health care agent. Um, with this pandemic, if you go in hospital and you don't have someone that can make decisions on your behalf if you're not in if you're not in the capacity to do that that can be serious so estate planning involves all of that um most people are kind of thinking that you have to have a whole lot of money to do estate planning you don't um, because basically you just want to make sure that the state doesn't get your stuff it goes to whatever you want it to go to and the trust allows you to do it in a way where you can literally from your grave, dictate how it's going to be spent. Um, and I'll use, again, I use my daughter who's 23. Um, I am a single mom and um, she is a single, she's the only child. So God forbid something happens to me tomorrow. I don't want her to inherit a lump sum of money with no instructions. Okay. She's still not mature enough yet to really know what to do with it. I can see pack the books on flea. <laughs> I'll be turning over in my grave. She'll be, oh, I got this car, this house, this, this, this weed. This, uh, no, that is not what that money is for. So the, the will, the trust allows me to outline how she'll get, when right, she'll right. get, and what she'll do with it, right? And so I can do that from my grave because I put that in place prior. And that's why estate planning becomes huge. So y'all hear that you don't have to have a whole lot of money to have right. estate planning. And from the grave, you can That's dictate right. how right. they spend that money. So That's they won't right. be ghetto rich for, you know, six months <laughs> and then right. broke after, after you're gone, parents. Exactly. So y'all hear that. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for those of you that didn't know, like she said, estate planning is so that something happened to you. You don't want the state coming in and taking all your stuff and your family not have nothing. Mm -hmm. So estate planning, is that something that your company does as well? We help our clients with that. We do what we call a comprehensive um, financial plan. We call it a blueprint. So it's going to include everything from cash flow to debt management 
to insurance, which is the foundation of any good plan. Um, that includes life insurance, health insurance. Um, and then we focus for retirees on income planning, um, how to make sure they have a paycheck in retirement um, and a play check. Um, and then I, I like that. planning and we go into long-term care as well. A paycheck. You hear that, Lori? Paycheck and a play check. <laughs> I like that. Yes. So, I like that as well. <laughs> I need me a play check. That's right. <laughs> so we That's had right. a question for what type of attorney should you get for a state trust? So you want to work with an estate attorney um, and they specialize in doing estate planning. And um, that's, that's where they're focused on doing the planning, the will, the trust, the legal documents that they want to have in place. So they want to do okay. it. Plan. Now, with the, the paycheck and the paycheck, <laughs> is that, would that be money that one would put aside for a rainy day or that's a separate category? Right, so your paycheck and your paycheck in retirement, because while you're working, you know, you get your paycheck every two weeks. But when you retire, you're not working any longer, so there's no paycheck coming in. So you want to plan your retirement so that you have income sources like um, personal pension, like Social Security. Um, you can convert your IRAs and your 401ks into an income stream. And that income stream is going to give you a paycheck so that when you retire, you can replace that, that check that you were getting. And you want to have a play check so you can have some money left over so you can go play, right? <laughs> After you pay right. all your bills and do all the things you got to do to support your lifestyle, you still might want to go to the beach, might want to go on vacation. Right, so your right. play check is money that we're going to, again, smartly invest so that it's growing and allowing you to play. Your paycheck, however, we don't want to risk that in anything that's going to go like up or down. We want that to be a predictable guaranteed income stream for you. Okay. So when it's time to get our 401ks, we don't just take the, like, give me all my money at one time. We <laughs> still leave it there and allocate a certain amount that we want to come to us. Right. So when you're ready to retire, um, the first thing we're going to do is sit down and do a income plan. Okay. And we're going to say, where do you have monies that we can move to create an income for you? Most people have 401ks. Um, some people have IRAs. Um, some people are saving. Um, so those are sources that we can then convert to an income stream for, right? Okay, pull it right. all together. All right, right. so that means... That Crisco can is on the stove with the change in it. That's right. Everything. Just put it all together. Under the mattress, under the rock. Outside, yeah. That too. That money that we know Pop Pop done hid in the laundry room somewhere. We pull it all, pull it all right. of that money together. That's right. We pull it all together. We say, okay, now we got to create you an income stream. Okay. And, and that's exciting because... Most people, like I said, they do have 401ks and IRAs. And unfortunately, you can't necessarily take that 401k without having a way to convert it to income. You don't want to just pull off of it because if you pull too much at the wrong time, you may run out of money. And that's okay. most people's number one fear is that they run out of money um, too soon. And that's good to know because I have an aunt that recently retired and... Um... She still has a source of income, she, uh, daycare. She runs a day, she was daycare owner. And mm -hmm. one of her properties, she kind of subleasing. So she still had, you know, it's not the income she was accustomed to, but she still had sure. some income coming in. And I know she got some investments with like Vanguard and stuff like that. So her retirement plan is a lot different than how I seen my mom retire. You know, when she, she worked for the state for 35 years, it was time for her to retire. And she was just like, give me all my money. And I remember like, hey, they taking out chunks for all these different reasons. You know, um, she wasn't at the, the, whatever the correct age was to retire at the time. So she, you know, lost some money there. And 
like you said, if you take it out, <clears throat> if you take it out at the wrong time, because mm-hmm. it's like, I'm retiring right now, but they were saying, wait six months, but she was like, give me my money. <laughs> mm-hmm. My mom was ghetto rich for a year. <laughs> you know, but luckily, you yeah. know, she already had a home and everything uh-huh. that she needed, and she had grown children that loved her and spoiled mm-hmm. her, but I'm glad that my aunt and I'm making the mistakes. And those are mistakes that I don't want, you know, yeah. us to make or, or anybody that we connected to. And that's why we do stuff like this. So as Kaysan said, knowledge is power. And sometimes we we just don't know. And we want to be, when we know better, we want to do, do better. better. So right. we want our children to do better than us. I want them to have savings accounts now, you know, and learn how to manage their money now. Ain't gonna my handsome nephew, the one that I just said need to buy a house yeah. real soon. Yeah, so. <laughs> Instead of paying all of that rent. Right. That's why he, that's why he come over here to eat because all his money. <laughs> <laughs> come over here to wash his clothes and to eat. <laughs> we need him to get a house. That's God right. Bless the baby. <laughs> What types of, I know you, you, you've gone over um, a plethora of information. What types of savings should we start having at what age? Hmm. Great question. So it's never too early to start, first of all, but you, you want to have your emergency fund. That's the first okay. line, if you will. Um, and the emergency fund is money that's liquid. So it's in a savings account. Um, ideally it's three to six months of your living necessities, but who knew we would be in a pandemic for over a year. So it's certainly okay to have more in the emergency fund, Mm -hmm. um, because the emergency fund is there. If you lose your job or you have a major medical event or something like that, and you can't work, that's money there. That's going to allow you to maintain everything while you're in between or in transition. So that's your first line is your emergency fund. The next area I say is your long-term investing. That's where you're doing for your retirement. So that's your 401k, your IRA. That's money that you've earmarked for your retirement. Um, And there are some alternatives, alternative investments for retirement that I really want my younger people to, to grasp. 401ks are great, but that's not the only way. There are vehicles where you can put money away toward retirement that's going to allow it to be tax-free when you're ready to access it. And tax-free is tax free. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Tax-free is sweet. So um, one of the things we do when we, you know, meet with someone is we talk about the traditional ways, but we also force them to look a little bit out the box, right? Look at some strategies that the wealthy have been doing for decades that we've been left out on. And one of those is creating tax-free retirement income. So tax-free retirement income is the next thing that you want to start looking at. And maybe one of the best kept secrets for tax-free retirement income, Uh and I know people are going to be like, oh no, what is that? What is that? Is life insurance. Yes, 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 yes. And I know, oh no, I don't like life insurance. I hate life insurance. Can I just tell you, the wealthiest of the wealthiest have built their wealth by utilizing cash value life insurance. It go my clapper, it's just the clapper when the nuggets <laughs> drop from heaven. Oh, you don't right. see something right there. That's right, that's right. But that's a best kept secret. And the challenge is, we've been the ones in the secret. We the ones in the, in the no not right? We right everybody know but us. Part. Right, everybody know but us. Hey, so, the kids say that part, life <laughs> is short. That's right. So we did a, um, a podcast not too long ago about life insurance. For me personally, last year, was I guess horrific for everybody you know like you said we didn't know about the pandemic coming and right. how it seemed like more people were people die every day that's why so many yes. you yes. know uh funeral homes and stuff but 
every day you you know you turn on you turn on social media and it's like a gun a go fund me for uncle earl a go fund me yeah. for this one a go fund and it was like don't nobody have life insurance and i remember as a little kid the life insurance man would come to my grandmom's house to collect the money weekly or bi-weekly and she you know she would pay the life insurance for for everybody it seemed everybody. like and i remember when she when she transitioned i was an adult then i was a young adult but i was like listen now she was paying life insurance since i was a little kid and her policy was only a thousand dollars you know so it's like before we spend money on flowers and stuff we need to handle business so we could pay for this funeral and so i took it upon myself to educate myself about life insurance because i was like i don't want to be giving nobody money for 80 years and then when it's time to use that money it ain't there. Right. And then that's when, you know, like I said, last year I realized how many people don't understand the value of life insurance. That's how a lot of people got out the hood because yeah. their mom or dad left insurance and somebody gave them wise counsel. Like, okay, don't be ghetto fabulous. Go buy you a home, put some money aside for school or whatever you, you know, whatever you want to do. And I just feel like it's just our job to stand from the mountaintop and be like, wake up, listen, like you just said, let me tell you these secrets. Yeah. Everybody else yeah. know, but we don't know, listen. That's right, that's right, yeah. I wish, I wish I wouldn't have been so young when my parents had passed because, you know, they, they, they left me money and, you know, I was just getting out of high school, trying to get into college. And I was using that, you know, to maintain between you know, getting out of high school and going to college until I started working, you know, because like that money that I had, I wish I could have took it and invested in a funeral home. <laughs> <laughs> a funeral home, a laundromat, something yeah. so that your money could be making money. I think yeah. two of the greatest things you can invest in is funeral homes and toilet paper. <laughs> it's dying and folks got to wipe their behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's right have another comment that say let me tell you i got money circulating all over i will never be broke amen sis amen good good amen all right cat what's that cash value life insurance i'm not sure what cash value life insurance is that a question or can you can yeah, you tell us about so, what's a cash value life insurance absolutely and, and again that's i think it's worth a whole nother show but in short um, there's two fundamental types of insurance. You have term and you have permanent. Mm -hmm. uh, a source of permanent is where there is a cash value or a savings component with the insurance. Term, it's, it's, it's a basic death benefit pays out. Okay. Neither one is right or wrong. Um, both uh, have its purpose and its place. Um, and when you're planning, you want to sit down again with a planner that's going to be able to say what your situation is and which one is best for you. So I would be remiss to say, oh, everybody should get this one or everyone should get that. It depends on your circumstances. It depends on your financial picture. It depends on um, what your end goal is for that. So there's a place for both. Okay. But cash value is the kind that has that savings component tied to it well you know I, I was just trying to go through that on the other day you know mm -hmm. and uh you know um me and pastor was talking about <laughs> trying to decide whether we want to go with you know term or uh -huh. a, a whole life and i'm like i don't plan to live past night i mean <laughs> that's what he told the people like <laughs> I don't need that either. <laughs> if I live past 90, that's a miracle. You know, so I mean, it's just, I don't even want to see what I look like at night. You know? Just, no, I want you to be here forever with me. I can't be here forever. <laughs> I got to go and be with Jesus yeah, one right. day. <laughs> but that is, a, that is a, a valid point because a lot of people don't know the difference and they don't understand how it works. So again, that is where education becomes critical um, and few can 
you know, educate people and show them, then they can make a decision on what works best for them. And that's part of what we do is I believe in teaching and educating first and then through that process, helping them come to whatever, you know, financial decisions they need to make. It comes with education. You know what? And I think speaking to someone like you would probably be better for a lot of people so they won't feel the pressure of um, a life insurance agent, Yeah, you know, because that's where I'm one of them people. You could fast talk all day. But I'm going, I'm going to write my questions down. I'm going to write down what you say. Mm -hmm. And you can fast talk me all day. And we're going to come back mm -hmm. to number two. You said that's what? Right. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at. And that's like, right. like Kayson said, you know, a lot of people don't want to have those discussions. They don't want to have talk about life and death. They don't want to talk about life insurance. I got a couple uncles that was like, well, I'm going to be dead. I don't care what y'all do. No, y'all can't do that I to know. us. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, um, and, that's, and that's the real truth of what she just said is a major point is that um, us as a people, we don't talk about um, what's going to happen when somebody die. Right. You know, uh, I would say just on my own uh, estimate, like I think maybe 20, maybe 40 max percent of black people got a living will or, or, or have or a will at all or a will at all, right. you know, to say, I want this to happen. I want that to happen. Not to mention talking about life insurance, you mm -hmm. know, so uh, for some of our people that's coming on late. Can you just express to them why do we have you on here tonight? <laughs> Excellent. Um, again, my name is Joyce Palmer. I am the CEO and founder of JP Financial Group, which is a financial boutique for ladies, but we like men too. <laughs> I'm, also the, <laughs> I'm also the co-owner of JPFG Wealth Management, which uh, is a wealth management company showing people how to invest the smart way. And we're talking about financially being prepared. And you cannot be financially prepared if you're not looking at all aspects of your financial picture, including your cash flow, your debt, and including your insurance. Life insurance is the foundation to any financial plan. It is the fastest and easiest way to create generational wealth. And in our communities, that is where we're falling short. We are passing on debt instead of passing yes. on wealth. And so time out for that, time out for being on the sidelines and watching other people grow and build their wealth. When we have the resources, the talents and abilities right here within our own communities, within our own organizations, like you guys putting on this podcast, um, like what we're doing at JP Financial Group and JPF Wealth Management, we're educating, uh, we're empowering, and we can help you execute the action steps to get that done. Because you can listen to all of it and you can write it all down, but if you don't take action, it's all for not. So you have to execute. You know, what you're saying, what you just said is so real because unfortunately, once again, in our community, uh, we don't think about what type of bills we're gonna leave behind for the people that's gonna be left behind. You know, you, you just live in life, you know, going all willy nilly, but you're not thinking about like, that's why life insurance is so important. That's why like you say that savings is so important. Right, so trust fund. so yeah. when you go on your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, you know, your kids ain't left to paying them bills because them they still looking for somebody to pay them bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and life insurance, a lot of times people don't like to talk about it because they're like, like you said, oh, that's for the people that I'm gone. Who, what do I care? I'm not here anymore. Well, the new type of life insurance has living, <laughs> benefits, has living benefits. So if you have the old type of life insurance, you may not have living benefits, but living benefits exist in the new policies. And that's so if you have a stroke, a heart attack, or a pandemic, the virus, it allows you to tap into a portion of your policy death benefit 
while you are living. So all of a sudden, it is beneficial for you to have a living benefit. Long-term care, critical illness. You hear people, all these people that unfortunately died in the nursing homes. Well, man, I would have never had my loved one in a nursing home because I wanted to make sure they could stay in their own home. Well, right. living benefits in that policy can allow you to do that. Most people don't want to go to a nursing home. They want to stay in their own home and they just can't because they can't, they don't have the financial resources. Well, the new life insurance gives you living benefits and that's a huge component. So if you haven't revisit your policy, it's worth revisiting it, you know, and, and we do free um, life insurance analysis for you. We'll take a look at what the what you got currently, and if we can show you where the new plan is better and improved, we can upgrade you. Like Beyonce say, we'll upgrade. Every time you upgrade right? you, yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and not paying that, um, like the example I gave about my grandmother, just paying this policy yeah. and not knowing that at the wow is is going to run out. We would have did better just putting that money in a savings account somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a comment from Matthew Ford. Is this Matthew in Houston? Yes, yes. All right. Elder Ford from Houston, Texas said, absolutely right. Financial solutions are available out there with living benefits and an amazing way to set up retirement as well as death benefits. Yeah. Yes, great comment, yeah. Matthew. Thank you. Brenda, Anderson, Phyllis, k -Sign, thank you guys for joining us. Joyce, what's your phone number? I'm going to go ahead and um, put your information on in the chat so everybody will be able to get in contact with you. Absolutely. So um, my phone number is 704-543-6269. Okay. Um, you can also email at Joyce at JP financial group llc.com and definitely go to our website www.jpfinancialgroupllc.com we're on You're facebook also on social media go ahead go yeah, do your commercial go do your commercial right. right. <laughs> facebook and look and i'm excited about my facebook because Prior to the um, pandemic, um, we did business the old fashioned way, you know, eyeball to eyeball. So I did very little social media. Well, I have a social media guru right now working with me and she ain't got me up to speed. I got a thousand likes and a thousand people on Facebook. So I'm excited about that. But yes, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter um, and we're on um, Instagram as well. Um, Joyce, JP Financial Group um, on all of those outlets. And we have a podcast. Woo! Go girl. So you guys got to come to our podcast too. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And you know, I just, uh, I wanted to uh, just add on to what um, Elder Matthew Ford was saying about us, you know, having our uh, stable financial life will allow uh, not just for us to be able to live and die in peace, but for the people that leave behind, you know, because um, I want my children to know that I'm not going to leave them struggling. Right. You know, and, right. and, and, and we we all should want, you know, uh, the 30 year olds, the late 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 60 year olds, mm -hmm. like to prepare to have your children and your good grandchildren to be able to survive. That's you right. know, how many legacies yeah. got started because somebody was smart enough to say, I'm going to put this money to a side so that one day my grandson or my son can do something with their life. Mm -hmm. and it, it, in order to, to get to that place, you need people like yourself that can direct us and lead us into the path. Wealth, yes. So we can have that in, in our lives. Yeah. And I think something um, else beneficial that you said, once people come, you know, once they get wealth or get rich, how to stay rich. For all those first generation, not, you know, that first generation money, you yeah. know, we want to make sure that uh, you get rich and stay rich and you could pass down that generational mm -hmm. wealth. That's and right. like you said, unfortunately, we see so many of us that have made it, but lost it somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to make sure I got your email address right. It's Joyce at JP Financial Group, 
dot LLC? Uh, Joyce at JP Financial Group LLC.com. Okay. What yeah. city are you located in again? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. okay. But but you are accessible. But we serve we serve clients in all 50 states and outside the country. So okay. this whole pandemic has opened up um, an amazing um, audience, and I'm I'm like I'm amazed every day. I get calls and emails from people from all over. And like I said, prior to the pandemic, I was just a local girl. But now I'm, <laughs> I'm international. I'm U.S. I'm across the country. Yay! <laughs> awesome. <That's right>. awesome. <laughs> yeah. So what would one have to do in order to get the complimentary plan? So if um, they reach out and they say they were listening to your show today, um, and that's considered that as a referral. If you come as a referral, then we waive our um, consultation fee, which is normally $1,500 for a comprehensive retirement plan. Um, but if you come to us through a referral, you say you were listening to the show, we waive that and they're able to get a comprehensive written retirement plan um, without any cost at all. Okay, y'all hear that? $1,500 hookup, yes. Right. Y'all back, come on and take care of your business. Well, put my name down. <laughs> you right. know what, and, I, and seriously, you know, we, we joke and, and laugh a lot, but you know, in my mind, I'm already like, I got to call Miss Joyce. That's right. Because a lot of stuff, you know, we educated ourselves on, so we know you know, you work, you get a 401k. Yeah, you're doing good. We got a check-in account. We got a savings account. If we got some money aside for when we want to go on vacation, we think, you know, we good. Mm -hmm. uh, our 401 is our retirement. Our kids is our retirement. Right. Just in case Social Security ain't around no more. Right. So we got life insurance. Mm -hmm. We buy in our home. So I think we're in a good place, but we need someone like you to help us to pull it all together. Pull it all together. That's so right. That's, that's right. for us. Mm -hmm. And you you said you're also able to help and to educate young people that's just getting out there, like your daughter that's 23, mm -hmm. my nephew that's 21, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. start having these conversations with them so they can start their financial planning and not living above your means. I know right. we used to call it keeping up with the Joneses. Everybody yeah. wants to keep up you know, with the Joneses, but it's important mm -hmm. for us to teach young people, like, don't live beyond your means. That's don't, me. I think yeah. for me, one of the scariest things in adulthood, I didn't want to live hand to mouth. I didn't want to be paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that I learned, not just from my family, but in ministry as well. You yes. know, we had yeah. a, a very good, uh, blend of individuals in our ministry, you know, the, mm -hmm. The little lady from the project with, with mm -hmm. single children to, right. you know, perfect, you know, people on a professional end making six mm -hmm. figures. So it, I, I, I came up around a good blend. Variety. Yeah, a good, yeah. a good blend yeah. of people. But even with that, we still we still need some help and some things that we can do better. And we definitely want to spread that knowledge and like we said scream from the mountaintop right. all of these secrets That's right. <laughs> all That's these right. secrets like thank you grandma for telling me to put a couple dollars under the mattress but uh -huh. when it's retirement time i don't want to be eating cat food <laughs> i want to have a couple dollars i want right. to i want to be the senior citizen lady on the uh -huh. beach uh-huh <laughs> That's right. That's well, right. I know I'm thankful. I'm grateful to you for uh, hopefully the knowledge that you will be able to pass on, not just on the night, but the, those that are see this continually mm -hmm. even after today. Absolutely. And um, I thank you for, for blessing us and giving us some things that we didn't know. And we look forward to uh, connecting with you uh, yes. face to face. Yes, you know? yes. 
Yeah, we got to invite you out to our, to our podcast, our um, Proactive Women podcast. So um, we're we're getting geared up to catch up with you guys. We just started ours <laughs> a little while ago. So I'm excited about having you guys come on my show as well. Right. Thank you so much, Ms. Joyce. And uh, I just want to go over a couple more comments from, from mm -hmm. uh, Facebook. Education is key. They say, thank you for the podcast. And Matthew, this is what we do. Every two weeks, we invite you into our living room and we have conversations that's going to empower us. Listen, everybody ain't <clears throat> ratchet. Everything that come on Facebook ain't got to be, you know, twerking and, and cussing and fussing. We here to empower one another and just having a conversation. Just having yeah. a conversation. Knowledge is power. Yes, and also say old money was once new money. It got to start somewhere. I know that. Wait, <laughs> remember clapping? Remember clapping? Yes. That's yes. right, Dr. Boyd. That's right, Dr. Boyd. That's right. I like that. So again, guys, we thank you for joining us on tonight. We'll be back on June 10th. On June 10th. And that edition is going to be saved and single. We got a bunch of single guys. <laughs> That's the case I is going to be on there with them talking about how they um, maintain their sativity. <laughs> how they stay safe. How the brothers stay saved how and stay safe. How do they continue in the walk? Right. That's why we putting it on the brothers this time because they always say, you know, a man that finds a, a wife. So while we home working and getting ready for him to come, we want to know what he's thinking and what he doing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I want to know it all. Good stuff. And Good I want to know it all. Yes. So that's what we're going to be talking about on Thursday, June 10th. And again, we thank you so much, Miss Joyce Palmer from <laughs> Joyce Palmer JP Financial Group. For ladies in JP Financial Wealth Management. Yay! Thank her you. Guys. Information so is in the chat. Y'all see her information down there in the chat. So please reach out to her with your questions, your concerns. And she said for a referral, duh, you gonna waive that $1,500 consultation fee. If nothing else, let this be your blueprint. Let this be the beginning of letting you know and understand those 16 points that she went over with us on tonight. So, oh, uh, we got a whole, you got a whole bunch of hearts and a whole bunch of thank oh, you, okay. JP Financial. <laughs> so, Ms. Joyce, I love you already. And, and oh, I had the opportunity to, to meet you in person with one, another one of the organizations that you work with. Yes. For, um, women transitioning into their yeah. home. So from that, my heart was already open to all of those beautiful women that I met on yeah. that day. And now just having this conversation with you over the podcast, I'm like, I love Miss Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't wait until we had an opportunity to, uh, you know, to be in one another presence again. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure this evening. Yes, it is. Thank you, guys. This was awesome. This was really, this was really good. Really good. Well, we'll be talking to you soon and okay. thank you again. All and right. guys, always remember this hope. A new hope. God bless. <laughs>